Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the DevConf presentation, Talking Architecture Shop with Anyone. We're going to be looking at uh, open source success at scale uh, through a project that uh, uh, the portfolio architects at Red Hat, uh, where I am also one of, Eric D. Chabelle, uh, I'm the technical director of our products that we create. And um, what we like to do is collect uh, some of the actual customer implementations and then take those to a generic level and share them with the world. So let's see what uh, open source success at scale looks like. So in the beginning, when you start with architecture, uh, one of the things you have is a plan, right? A very nice plan. And usually everybody draws this up with great detail. Uh, it means we should end up with all the same exact uh, uh, execution, right? Uh, but when reality takes over and somebody else takes those plans and starts implementing, you could end up with something like this. Now, I know this is a super extreme example, and anybody with common sense you would think would not do something like this, but uh, funny enough, sometimes our, our stuff ends up looking like this. So, how do we get to a point in time where we can take plans that look really good and everybody implements them correctly? Um, my idea and, and, and the idea of our entire team has been, let's take a look at really good examples where people have done this and created really beautiful things and if you could take uh, all this information and share it in some kind of con condensed form, this should help us map our solutions also to the same uh, results. So, what we've done is we've taken uh, uh, an architectural process, we put it together, trying to make it common and repeatable. And uh, we have a visual language and tool sets, we have presentations, diagrams, uh, we put quite a bit of stuff together over the last three, four years. And uh, you're going to get to see uh, the results of this today. Uh, some of the uh, stuff that I put in, the, in the, the, the abstract for this talk has to do with retail. So we're going to cover three retail cases. And I'm going to give you uh, one extra one. Now, each one of these cases uh, that we decide to implement in this, uh, this process has to do with three or more open source technologies. Now, in our case at Red Hat, we really like to see our products in there. But uh, uh, it could be three or more open source technologies. And that basically puts together a rather advanced integration of, of, of some kind of solution space, be that uh, uh, point of sales, be that uh, uh, real-time stock control, things like that. Um, we have 24 or 25 of these, and, and what, what it consists of is we, we've sat down and done customer research behind two to three uh, implementations, take those to a generic level and try to create diagrams. You see here an example of the architecture on the left, and then we'll have three diagram uh, levels from logical to schematic or physical, and then a detailed diagram. Uh, today we'll look at some of the architectures, the logical, and a uh, few of the schematic ones behind each one of these uh, the architectures we're going to talk about. The uh, field uh, inside of Red Hat uh, is given uh, enablement and, and presentations around this. Uh, we have a public-facing presentation that includes some of the diagrams you're going to see today. Uh, at the end, I'll provide some links to some of the public-facing content so you can go explore those yourself. Um, we also write up either articles or uh, solution briefs that you can find on redhat.com. The publications tend to be spread around uh, in different places. We do some of the stuff at Enable Architect. Sometimes they land on a Red Hat property itself. Uh, sometimes they're out on Dezo. You have uh, presentation videos we like to put together, which is sort of a process of walking through one of the use cases and all the content that's available and how to talk to that. You're gonna get a little bit of that today. Uh, where possible, where it exists, we don't build them, generally speaking. Uh, it goes a little bit too far in our uh, architectural uh, product, but we do have uh, uh, within Red Hat, uh, various demos or in the communities uh, around these open source technologies that might cover aspects of an architecture. In that case, we will include those links so you can go explore that yourself. The first one up is uh, supply chain integration and you're, you're looking at one of the, the architecture diagrams. Um, this is a high level introduction. Uh, anybody can talk to this. It's really nice for these kind of presentations where you can say, hey, we're talking about these business drivers. It has to do with supply chain integration in the retail space in this case. Doesn't necessarily have to be confined to retail. And then you have a look at the container platform and some of the generic elements that are involved. Doesn't get too deep allows you to start talking to somebody about what they're doing and, and where they're at and where they might be having problems. This then rolls over into uh, the three levels of architectural diagrams that our tooling supports. 
where we've taken the time to do an open source tool uh, as the basis. We started with Draw.io and I believe it's called Diagram.net now. And we put uh, our own configuration on top of it to include some of the colors and icons that you see here that are brand approved for our company. Um, it gives us a, a well-defined set uh, that we can communicate with. Uh, you'll get a logical grouping and a logical view of what's going on in this uh, architecture. You'll get a few schematical diagrams. Uh, today we'll probably share just one in each one of the architectures, but there can be more. Uh, based on what we find in the customer research, we try to document some of that uh, at a generic level, not at the specific level of what happened to that customer. And then you'll have a, a, a detailed diagram or, or more of them. So the idea being that you can talk at any level all the way down into zooming into these schematics to a specific component uh, or element, I should say, which is a con collection of components uh, in one of these architectures. So again, back to supply chain integration. We have here uh, uh, groupings where you see the, the container platform that you saw. You see the elements involved inside that. Uh, you see the infrastructure services where they're located. You see the external systems there that are being connected to. You see some of the storage services in this case that we covered. Uh, and you see the hybrid cloud infrastructure. Note that nothing specific is talked about a, a, for a product or a technology or a community project. Nothing like that yet. It's all very much about a, a high logical level look at what's going on. Then we get into the schematic diagram where you see an actual case worked out where these elements you saw in the logical diagram are then applied. And you see a little bit more detail involved here now. So we have uh, uh, the various parties on the left side making some kind of uh, call in through uh, API management. And you'll note that one of these elements now includes uh, reference to a, a product, an implementation that could be used. It doesn't have to be, but we map as much as possible to these open source Red Hat products uh, or, or just plain open source where it's not available as a product. Uh, we'd like to keep the open technologies uh, sort of in the background, but it, it is a discussion that comes up when you start getting to how do you do that. So if you're somebody at an organization looking to do something around this supply chain integration, this is what successful customers have done at scale. So you have to look in your architecture and in your domains and decide event streaming, what choices have I made in the past, what have I been stuck with or what am I using currently or what am I open to using and if it's Greenfield we have a few suggestions um, and you see that through the event streams various actions happen to integrate with backends or with data data frameworks which is a separate uh, 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 architecture in itself which we won't cover today another thing that's kind of nice about these and I'm going to drop out into uh, out of the presentation and if you look in the speaker notes here at the bottom I know it's a little bit small on your screen but there's a link there and that link uh, takes us directly into I got a discard from my previous ones takes us that link takes us into the tooling itself where it opens up the actual diagrams and you see tabs here at the bottom and the tabs include the the, the various uh, schematic logical and detailed uh, diagrams and you can actually edit some of this stuff. You can manipulate this stuff and you'll see various uh, aspects around the, 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 the networking and whatever. You can put labels on things. You can change this to whatever your internal thing is for the customer you're gonna talk about or to the architect you're talking about. Um, you're also able to design your own should you want to. Uh, but this, this case, you're actually talking about discussing something with a slide and then jumping. Everything we present is, is available to be manipulated and used. back to the presentation. And on to the next one where we're talking about real-time stock control. <coughs> Excuse me. So you see here that we have uh, a container platform, we have the customer colleagues and uh, supplier partners or vendors out there uh, working through the various aspects, aspects of integrating with our stock systems finding out what's available to sell, keeping track of what's available to sell, uh, uh, includes events that are being triggered to uh, uh, order management, supply chain systems, logistic systems, uh, cataloging systems, catalog management, different things like that that might be important in your organization. And again, on the left side, the business drivers for this particular case. Very high level, very generic talk. Then you get into the logical diagrams again. Again, you can open this up in the tooling should you want to manipulate it for something else. We see here the external applications on the left, 
moving to the right, gateways and proxies, the container platform with our various uh, microservice and uh, event streaming activities, including process automation. And you see the infrastructure services on the back end that are indicative of possibly being external uh, in the cloud or in a private cloud hosted on the uh, retail vendor's own data center. Then we get to the schematics where real-time stock control, uh, you see here the various actors on the outside there, various users and vendors and suppliers and colleagues, and where they kind of plug into the various uh, elements that are involved here where we have, you know, API uh, management handling the requests coming in, generating events, maybe triggering processes that are a little bit more longer running, uh, dealing with payments, uh, promotions being generated, attached to various elements in our uh, stock before we sell them, and all the integration to the backend systems. Another comment that's worth being noted here is you'll see the colored lines are considered network connections. These are meant more along the lines of giving you kind of a flow of what's talking to what, not, not, not identifying any kind of specific VPNs or, or certain network setups. That's left to the architects to figure out themselves. You will note that the dark black line there is connecting to a completely different side. We standardize that as being a, a data flow. So here you see the integration data microservices at the bottom there are connecting uh, data uh, in and out of the retail data framework, which is an apart architecture. We have the omnichannel customer experience. Now, when you look back at the previous one, you'll see quite a bit of integration going on. So I thought I would mention, we have almost 25 of these now, I believe, uh, uh, completely published and three or four more in progress. Um, the Omnichannel Customer Experience is one of them. I'm only showing you the, the, the introduction architecture uh, uh, story here. There's a whole uh, portfolio architecture behind it with diagrams and everything. Feel free to go explore that. When we get to the end, there'll be a, a, a reference a slide that'll show you a link where you can jump over and start looking at that stuff. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. There are many more. So the final one I promised you in the in the, the abstract was the point of sale. Uh, point of sale here has to do with sort of like a retail organization, developers in the top uh, center there, deploying everything out to their image store. Uh, that's being spread around to the various retail locations where it's being pushed to the point of sale, uh, whether it's apps or data collection or whatever it is. Uh, those images are being uh, uh, updated and, and deployed as needed and collecting from the endpoints, uh, the various stores. We're finding sales data and feeding that back into our retail data framework so we can keep our stock control and, and that kind of stuff. Here's a logical diagram where we see on the left side the point of sales, uh, the store server in the middle with the various uh, aspects involved and the elements involved there to make sure we're aggregating our sales data and collecting all that and you know keeping our catalog up to date and then we have the infrastructure services that have to do with the developers on the back end through the point of sale uh, continuous integration and deployment platform where they're developing their images their apps and pushing that out through the satellite server there and here you see the the schematic look at how that works where oops, the schematic, there you go, the schematic look uh, of the point of sale, uh, where we see on the left side, the developers and the operations and the retail data framework. And then you have the central retail IT where they're doing the development and setting up the images and the application to be pushed out to the individual retail stores. Uh, we're indicating multiple stores with those gray boxes layered like that, uh, showing you one store in specific here where the image and data store cache is being used to, to update the point of sales where the point of sales are also feeding in the, the sales data aggregation information uh, to be able to send back so they can keep the SKU catalogs up to date and in sync from the retail data framework. More information here, talked about the examples repository. Um, we can go ahead and uh, drop out of here and take a look at what that looks like. So this is over here uh, and you'll see the retail uh, is listed here. I can zoom this up a bit. In the documentation here of retail, healthcare, manufacturing, financial services, uh, cloud adoption, uh, hybrid cloud management. There's lots of these things in here. Um, let's take a quick look at the retail one. That'll be uh, kind of, uh, uh, you see where you can load the diagrams. That's the same link you'll find in the slides. 
can also just download the diagram file and use the, uh, the Draw.io uh, tooling that you can uh, install locally. See here the architecture and the various things that are involved with, in this case, uh, the supply chain integration. So you can actually look at just the images and use those directly in your slides if you want. Point of sale, there's lots of these involved here. Headless e-commerce, business optimization, there's more and more. We also have the, the workshop here. I wanted to jump over to that quick. So if you're trying to figure out how to use the tooling directly, um, the best way and the recommended way would be to go ahead and jump over here and uh, take this Designing Your Best Architectural Diagrams uh, workshop. I'll do a little preview here in the menu and you see the various labs that you're walking through. We're exploring it and discovering what the asset library and the colors are for and how to connect and, and create uh, logical diagrams. Uh, schematic diagrams, detailed diagrams, uh, importing and exporting them so you can use them in your, your presentations, and uh, a few uh, examples of how to uh, use some of the quick starts and other tips we have. The, a little bit later today uh, here at the DevConf, I'm going to be doing a, a live workshop around this, so feel free to, uh, to, to join me there. Um, if you can't make that, then uh, this is online as you can see, and you can do it at your own pace. Uh, so feel free to join me later. That's a shameless plug and uh, Head back here to this and I would like to thank you that brings us to the end here. So we walked through three different retail uh, Architectures as promised in the abstract. I gave you a quick peek at the, the omni channel as an extra fourth one We looked at the tooling. We looked at what it's constructed of showed you a few places where you can find it and get started if you want to do it yourself invited you to my uh, workshop later so if there's any questions or any comments or any feedback you'd like to give, please drop into the chat and let me know. I'll be hanging out for a while anyway. You can also find me online. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a stranger, so feel free to connect. Thank you.